Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Thunder, and let's talk about Unite 2024. So Unity just wrapped up their conference, and let me tell you, there's a lot to impact, especially since Unity decided to drop their infamous runtime fee days before the event. Quite impressive if you ask me. Seems like they're doing a lot of cleanup after that mess. And for those of you who don't know, the runtime fee is basically where they charge you about 20 cents per install. Keep in mind, per install, not per sale. So if someone just spams install and uninstall the game, you get charged for that too. So you can see where the issue lies. First, the CEO came on stage and kicked things off by admitting that it has been having a bit of an identity crisis, which in my opinion, it's a huge understatement. So he started by explaining how they've been trying to appeal to everyone and to no one's surprise, they ended up appealing to nobody. He says that they're focusing now on what really matters to them, which is game development. The CEO promised that they'd be focusing on pushing fewer versions, but much more stable and performant. This means although we'll have less updates, they'll actually have polished features. Now, onto the start of the show, Unity 6. This guy whose name I probably will butcher, Pierre Paul Giraud, he stepped up to tell us how this is going to be the most stable, most performant Unity version yet. He even gave us a release date, October 17th. He talked about how they've thrown in a bunch of new graphics features, one of them being adaptive probes. Now, this is a very big feature in my opinion because it's going to allow us to make much more realistic lighting without having that huge performance impact or having it to pre-bake. And speaking of graphics, the engine's graphics engineer came on stage saying that in 2023, 90% of Unity games were made with either URP or HDRP. Now, they didn't say anything specific, but this might mean that they will finally be dropping the built-in render pipeline, which in my opinion, it would be the best. It's stupid to have this many pipelines. They're also introducing something called render graph for 2D games which supposedly cuts your memory usage by half on sprite maps. Now, this isn't something I'm really familiar with as 2D is my thing, so I can't really comment much on it. To me personally, it's not that big of a deal. But hey, if 2D is your thing, go for it. When it comes to 3D, let's not forget about adaptive probe volumes. This is actually the feature that I'm the most excited for. Basically, probe volumes allow you to fake global illumination. Quite impressive, right? Right now, you have to pre-bake them, which means manually generate them. But with APVs, it basically generates automatically, even at real time. So this will allow for more realistic and performant real-time global illumination. They also announced that they'll be giving the Fantasy Kingdom demo for free, although only for non-commercial use. This is something Unreal Engine tends to do. For example, look at their game animation sample. It's really impressive. Even though in this case, it cannot be used commercially, it's a great tool to learn how things work so we can get started with the new lighting and optimization features. In this demo, they do show something which is extremely impressive. They showed 4,000 trees running on a mobile phone, and that's besides the entire kingdom map, which for a mobile game, it's quite crazy, honestly. Here's where things get interesting. The Time Ghost demo. This was incredible. It's built in Unity HDRP, and honestly, if someone had told me that this was made in Unreal, I would have believed it. The BFX, terrain, lighting, everything looked amazing. They even showed off that they have 8 million blades of grass. They also used the adaptive prof volumes for this scene to swap between different light modes instantly. They then showed their new AI-powered cloth physics called Unity Sentis. I don't know how to feel about this as it still requires you to simulate the clothing and train the AI with actual animations that simulate clothing. But nonetheless, it can be a big help. I personally won't be making much use of it. On the multiplayer front, Unity has been making things much easier with the new multiplayer center, which is an improved version of the current Unity multiplayer solution. It's also kind of like an AI powered hub that is like an assistant where you can specify the player size, you know, your game modes, your type of game, and it recommends the best network solution. It also allows you to like, in just a few seconds, set up a lobby system and a chat system, which they showcase. 
And the thing that is most impressive to me is the fact that you can now run up to four clients within the same Unity editor. I have actually done a lot of multiplayer work and I can tell you, it's a pain in the ass to have to like be constantly building your game just to test a tiny change in your code. They wrap things up with some serious talk for the future. Like Unity 6.1 is already in the work for early 2025. They are also promising that it's going to be much easier to upgrade your project. They'll also be adding foldable screen support because why not? And they'll be adding new build targets. Plus, they're moving from Mono to Core CLR for scripting. Now, in case you don't know what this is, it's basically the foundation that the engine is built on, which in this case, Core CLR is the most recent version. Mono is pretty much being dropped at this point. So this should make things much more smoother and performant. This is the quick rundown of Unite 2024. Unit is making big promises. And hey, maybe this time they'll deliver. If you enjoyed this recap, hit the like button, comment, and consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.